Okay, so I have just under four hours to film, edit, and post this video. So if you're watching this at 2 p.m. on Friday uh, the 13th, you know, uh, you know what happened, and if not, well, I guess I failed. So last week I put out a little community post asking the masses if they would like one video, one long video on Friday, or two shorter videos each on Tuesday and Friday. And who would have thunk? Controversy bloom. The people spoke, you know, division ensued, and disagreement blossomed. Like, look at this. Look. There's only 9%. 9% separating the two. What am I supposed to do with this? Like, it's too close to call, I'm gonna contest the election. Anyway, honestly, the real winner in this entire situation is everybody who said, don't worry, boo, just upload whenever you want to, you know? Don't stress yourself out, we'll watch anything you post, it doesn't matter, just have fun. And like, listen, you know, that's very sweet of all of you, but what am I supposed to do with that information? That's like giving your student an assignment and just never giving them a due date, you know? I need that kind of like restriction in my life. But nevertheless, I'm here to give you, the people, what they want. Look at what you've done. Look at the runtime on this video. This is all your fault. I blame you. You can watch this 20 minute odyssey however you want to. You can split it up into five minute bite sized chunks or, you know, just consume it in one big 20 minute gulp. I don't know, you could play it backwards, watch it that way, flip it upside down, slow it down, send it to the FBI, it's up to you. Are you ready? Yes. <laughs> so, I think it's no secret that I really want to move out. I'm 20 years old, you know, I think it's due time that I have my own place. Like, I need my own space, I've outgrown this house. I need to be able to make food in the kitchen and not have somebody come up behind me and ask, Hey, what's cooking? You know, unseasoned steak, avocado, and sauerkraut. Are you happy? Now, I'm not gonna lie. This is something that I have been thinking about in here in the old noggin for a very long time. I can remember being 13 years old and already knowing what I wanted to do and how I wanted to live my life, you know? And this is gonna sound insane, and I've never spoken about this on the internet, but my dream has always been to live off grid. I want to buy like a pretty big house in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by a bunch of trees. Nobody's gonna bother me, no one. <laughs> I can produce everything that I need independently. I don't have to rely on anybody for survival. And that's it, that's just how I wanna live my life. My parents are welcome to come with me, but you know, we're gonna have to live in separate houses. It can be on the same land, but you're gonna need your own house, mom, I'm sorry. Just respect my social distancing, if you know what I mean. Now this all goes without saying that it doesn't even have to be in Canada, you know? Like, it could be any other country. I'm willing to leave Canada and set up my compound somewhere else, provided, you know, that they meet my list of demands. <coughs> Number one, it has to be very sunny. Number two, it cannot get hotter than 20 degrees or colder than five degrees. Number three, uh, preferably no taxes. So before all of, you know, political YouTube gets shoved down my throat, let me just make a quick statement here. I am coming at this from a completely apolitical point of view. I say this with all the hate in the world, I hate doing my taxes. Every year when my father comes up to me and tells me, Joanna, it's time for you to file your taxes. I just, I collapse, you know, like this year I cried. Taxes for me, ta okay, the word taxes just like sends my heart rate through the roof. It triggers my fight or flight. Every single year, you know, when it's around June, I spend one week looking through pages and pages of bank statements, just looking through my expenses. And I have to make sometimes like a 400 line Excel spreadsheet with all of my business expenses that consist of wigs, avocado, shampoo, you know, clothes. I'm sorry, if you don't understand 
what YouTube is, like you're not gonna understand how those are business expenses, right? So every year when I submit my taxes to the CRA, I'm absolutely mortified because I'm like, this is the year, this is the year that the CRA is gonna audit me and then I'm gonna get arrested for tax evasion. It's just a spiral. I don't sleep during tax week. I don't, I really don't. I just spend hours and hours filing through a bunch of documents that I don't care about like a madman. So anyways, that was my tax rant, you know, hopefully I don't get canceled. The last item on this list, I mean, I probably shouldn't say this because it is a little bit ridiculous, but honestly, it kind of has to be said. Uh, my location cannot in any single way impede Aritzia from delivering their packages to me. <laughs> You're still here. Hello. But anyways, with these main four uh, commands in mind, you know, I set out in search of off-grid houses and locations that mostly, I guess, fit, you know, my requirements. At first, I found a lot of off-grid houses in the U.S. Off-grid living is pretty big in the U.S., so I wasn't really surprised that I found a lot of options there. But anyways, you know, amongst my digging, I eventually come across something called Apocalypse Bunker. If that doesn't have my name written all over it, I don't know what does. This is amazing. I could live in a hole for the rest of eternity and nobody would even know that I'm there. Needless to say, I went through a little bit of an underground bunker phase, but ultimately, you know, what ended up curbing my enthusiasm was just the fact that, listen, I need sunlight, you know, and if it's not for my mood, I need sunlight for my skin. I've spoken about this at length previously, but the sun has helped my topical steroid withdrawal immensely. I just couldn't imagine living without the sun. So anyways, you know, for obvious, unfortunate reasons, the whole living underground in an apocalypse bunker option kind of died out for me. I know, tragic. We'll hold the funeral at a later time. Hi, it's almost 3 p.m. and we are going on a bit of a road trip. So we're going to a city that shall remain nameless because I don't want to get kidnapped that I'm planning in the f near future or not so near future to move out to. We're just gonna go visit, you know, scout the whole location out. Okay, let's go. I'm gonna become a farmer. I'm gonna grow corn. I'm gonna grow lettuce and potatoes, sushi, tattoos, the bake shop. We're gonna go to the bake shop. <laughs> but anyways, you know, out with the old, in with the new. I was browsing the internet one day and I found a listing for an old castle in England. <laughs> in comes my, how do we say it? Um, obsession with living in old castles era. So I went through a good three or four month period where I was seriously considering the possibility of living in an old 15th century castle in either England, Spain, or France. I didn't know there was such a big market for this online, you know? Like these things are beautiful. They're 500, 600 years old. And compared to like a modern day house of the same size, they're a lot cheaper because obviously they're old as sh I mean, I was like really living the fantasy though. You know, six year old me who wanted to be a princess even though my parents were not in any way royals would have loved this idea. Now, ultimately what ended up, you know, cutting this second tangent short was just the fact that most of these buildings, because they're so old, have pretty compromised structural integrity. And you know, I just don't want to be sleeping one night and wake up in a collapsed building so uh, for safety reasons, you know, I decided maybe this isn't the best option for me.
I'm really struggling this morning. <laughs> I know this like garbage camera just like can't pick it up, but the sky this morning looks like it's on fire. We're going for a swim today. Yeah, we're going for a swim. <laughs> okay, uh, see you guys later, I guess. at this point i would like to introduce supporting character number three alaska so alaska <laughs> so alaska is very cold you know um she's up north and honestly i love her i really do obviously it's cold there's very little sunshine so two out of four of my commands are pretty much gone with the wind but you know like, the scenery is beautiful. Off-grid living is really big there. Massive acreage. So, you know, honestly, it's a little bit of a contender, if I might say so myself. If there was an off-grid castle, you know, that had an off-grid bunker and was located in Alaska, I would 100% drop everything and move there tomorrow. Like, I'm putting in the offer today. Now, again, you know, as all of my obsessions do, they come to an end. And what ended up ending this one was just the fact that I don't know how I feel about enduring a lifetime of cold weather. You know, I live in Canada. I live in Ontario. I deal with the winter, but that's it. I just deal with it. You know, if I could move every winter to, I don't know, like Hawaii or Florida, I would because I just, I don't do well in the cold. So anyways, all of this, you know, all of this mental hardship and all of this pondering has just led me to the conclusion that for the time being, I'm better off just staying in Ontario. And probably, you know, buying a small apartment, that's gonna be my first housing experience. Now, all of this goes without saying that I probably, before moving out and buying a property, I need to get my driver's license. <laughs> Hi, my name is uh, Joanna C. I'm 20 years old and I don't have my driver's license. What's your favorite dinner food? Of course, if you're wondering, you know, as soon as I get my full G license, what car am I gonna get? I don't think I have to explain that. The real tragedy of this whole situation is that the Cybertruck doesn't start being produced until the beginning of 2022. So, you know, I've got a lot of sitting and waiting to do. But, you know, if any, if by any miracle, Elon Musk is watching this, please, please, could you just maybe, you know, perhaps speed it up just a little bit? Because I'm really waiting for my big bad Cybertruck, and I would really be happy to have it, so. I'll pay you double. I'll pay you triple. Maybe not. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, that's, I think, as far as I'm going to delve into this topic for now. I'll keep you guys posted, but that's all I have to say. I'm gonna do something, I don't know, maybe a little bit sacrilegious here, but I have olives that are about to expire, and I think I'm gonna put it on my avocado toast. I mean, hey, life is all about trying new things, right? Maybe, maybe this will taste disgusting, maybe I'll ruin my avocado toast, but at least then I'll know that olives on avocado toast, not a good thing. Not at all. Never have been and never will be. Oh my god, this looks disgusting. <laughs> what have we done? I, um, uh, okay, I guess. I don't know. What do you want me to say? It's olives on avocado toast. They're not meant to go together. So a couple of videos ago, I mentioned how my iconic pink Garmin Forerunner watch tragically passed away by way of broken wristband. That's all sad and everything, but I was now tasked with the prospect of finding a replacement. Now this is, uh, you know, the new kid on the block, Miss Thing. Uh, big bad boy. <laughs> this is the watch my dad has and you know I always see him being able to do a bunch of snazzy stuff on it You know, there's a bunch of different functions on it. So I was like, okay, might as well give it a chance. And you know what? I bought it uh, I disagreed heavily with the price tag, but you know, that's okay as long as it lives up to my expectations I'll be happy. My expectations are very high. Not gonna lie. 
you know, I, with that price tag, it better wash my dishes, solve all my problems, and give me perfect skin. But, you know. Now, the reason why I'm telling you all this story is because the process of setting this piece of trash up as a fully functional mechanical member of society was truly a process and a half. So for starters, I take this thing out of the box, and immediately it asks me, so, um, would you like to pair this watch with your phone? And I'm like, what? So I grab my phone, and, well, it's not here, I don't care, honestly. But uh, let me just say this, I hate my phone. A couple of years ago, two, actually, if I'm being specific, um, I mentioned how I absolutely hate my phone. It's a waste of money, and it's a distraction. So why are you here? Literally, the door is there, just leave. But anyways, I got rid of my phone about two years ago, and life was good, life was great, but then, you know, a certain someone uh, wanted to, you know, be able to know where I was at all times, and be able to contact me at all times. So, you know, I had to cave and unfortunately buy a phone again. I went to Bell and I begged them to give me an iPhone 6 because I wasn't going to deal with the whole no headphone jack situation. I don't like the virgin iPhone 7. I want the Chad iPhone 6 with the headphone jack. Now, again, why am I saying this? Well, because I have an iPhone 6, that means that, well, Apple just kind of stopped producing iOS updates for it. But anyways, going back to the story of my watch, to be able to pair my watch with my phone, I had to download an app on my phone that required my phone to have iOS 10 or later. Now, because as aforementioned, I have an iPhone 6, you cannot get iOS 10 on the iPhone 6. So guess what? I have a dysfunctional phone, I have a dysfunctional watch, and I'm also a victim of Apple's skeevy business practices. But anyways, after uh, lots of uh, stressing out, I ended up being able to pair my watch with my iPad. So, you know, I'm just gonna be carrying around my iPad at all times. <laughs> what does that even mean, pairing your watch with something? Is it like giving it a best friend? Like pairing? I'm sorry, I'm gonna sound like a million years old, but technology these days, like, anyways. But other than that, you know, the watch is pretty good. There's a bunch of functions that my other one didn't have, and um, it's pretty sophisticated, not gonna lie. The only complaint I have is that if I didn't sleep well, it tells me, hey, you didn't sleep well. Okay, listen, it's me, I slept in my body, I know. You don't need to tell me that, okay? Like, why do you need to know that information? You're invading my privacy. But yeah, everybody. Um, so that's it. I, I'm going through a little bit of a flare-up right now, I don't know if you can see. So I'm sorry this video isn't up to par, I guess you could say. Let me explain what happened. So recently we've been having a bit of a heat wave, and I kind of forgot that sweat is a pretty big aggravator of topical steroid withdrawal. You know, the two things do not mix, it's like oil and water. But you know, me and my delusion, I thought, oh, I'll go out for a run in 30 degree weather, so I did, and I absolutely tore through my skin. Like, I was just scratching, I destroyed everything. So I'm kind of healing from that at the moment. This is very much the process of healing from topical steroid withdrawal, you know, it's not a linear track. It goes like this. The lows are never as low as the highs are high, though, so that's great. But yeah, that's all I have to say. Thank you guys for watching. Next week's video is kind of a doozy. I've been working on it for a while now, so hopefully it gets out on time. But uh, yeah, thank you for watching. I love you so much, and I'll see you in the next one. Toodles!